is a narration by Tales of Terror. Later, after the War Council had disbanded, Fulgrim and Ferris Manus retired to the Lord of the Emperor's children's private staterooms aboard the Pride of the Emperor. Fulgrim's chambers were the envy of Terra's master of antiquities. Every wall hung with elegantly framed pictures of vibrant alien landscapes, or extraordinary pics of the Astartes and mortals of the Crusade. Antechambers filled with marble busts and the spoils of war radiated from the central stateroom, and everywhere the eye fell, it alighted on a work of unimaginable artistic beauty. Only the far end of the room was bare of ornamentation, the space filled with part-carved blocks of marble and easels of unfinished artwork. Fulgrim reclined on a chaise long, stripped out of his armour and dressed in a simple toga of cream and purple. He drank wine from a crystal goblet and rested his hand on a table upon which lay the silver-hiked sword he had taken from the Leia Temple. The sword was a truly magnificent weapon, hardly the equal of Fireblade, but exquisite nonetheless. Its balance was flawless, as though it had been designed for his hand alone, and its keen edge had the power to cut through Astarte's plate with ease. The purple gem at the pommel was of crude workmanship, but had a certain primitive charm to it that was quite at odds with the quality of the blade and hilt. Perhaps he would replace the gem with something more appropriate. Even as the thought arose, he dismissed it, feeling suddenly as though such an exchange would be the basest act of vandalism. With a shake of his head, Fulgrim put the sword from his mind and ran a hand through his unbound white hair. Ferris Manus paced the room like a caged lion, and though scout ships were even now hunting the Diasporex fuel collectors, he still chafed at this enforced inaction. Oh, sit down, Ferris. You will wear a groove in the marble. Take some wine. Sometimes, Fulgrim, I swear this isn't a ship of war anymore. It's a flying gallery said Ferris Manus, examining the works hung on the walls. Although, these pics are good. Who took them? An imagist named Euphrates Keeler. I'm told she travels with the 63rd Expedition. She has a fine eye, noted Ferris. These are good pics. Yes, said Fulgrim. I suspect that her name will be known throughout the expedition fleet soon. Although, I'm not sure about these paintings, said Ferris, pointing at a series of abstract acrylics of riotous colour and passionate brushstrokes. <sighs> you have no appreciation of the finer things, my brother, sighed Fulgrim. Those are works by Serena de Angelus. Noble families of terror would pay a small fortune to own such a piece. Really? said Ferris, tilting his head to one side. What are they supposed to be? They are... began Fulgrim, struggling to put into words the sensations and emotions evoked by the colours and shapes within the picture. He looked closely at the picture and smiled. They are recreations of reality, formed according to the artist's metaphysical value judgments, he said the words leaping unbidden to his lips. An artist recreates those aspects of reality that represent the fundamental truth of man's nature. To understand that is to understand the truth of the galaxy. Mistress De Angelis is aboard the pride of the Emperor. I should introduce you to her. Ferris grunted and asked, Why do you insist on keeping such things around? They are a distraction from our duty to the Emperor and Horus. Fulgrim shook his head. These works will be the Emperor's children's lasting contribution to a compliant galaxy. Yes, there are planets yet to conquer and enemies yet to defeat, but what manner of galaxy will it be if there are none to appreciate what has been won? The Imperium will be a hollow place if it is to be denied art, poetry and music and those with the wit to appreciate them. 
art and beauty are as close to the divine as we find in this godless age. People should, in their daily lives, aspire to create art and beauty. That will be what the Imperium comes to stand for in time, and it will make us immortal. I still think it's a distraction, said Ferris Manus. Not at all, Ferris, for the foundations of the Imperium are art and science. Remove them or degrade them, and the Imperium is no more. It is said that empire follows art and not vice versa as those of a more prosaic nature might suppose, and I would rather go without food or water for weeks than go without art. Ferris looked unconvinced and pointed to the unfinished works that lay at the far end of the stateroom. So what are these ones then? They're not very good. What do they recreate? Fulgrim felt a flush of anger, but suppressed it before it could show. I was indulging my creative side, but it is nothing serious, he said, a traitorous colonel within him seething at his handiwork being dismissed so lightly. Ferris Manus shrugged and sat on a tall wooden chair before pouring himself a chalice of wine from a silver amphora. It is good to be back amongst friends, said Ferris Manus, raising his chalice. That it is, agreed Fulgrim. We see too little of one another now that the Emperor has returned to terror. And taken the fists with him. I had heard, said Fulgrim. Has Dawn done something to offend our father? Not that I'm aware of, but who knows? Perhaps Horus was told. You should really try to get into the habit of calling him the War Master now. I know, I know, said Ferris. But I still find it hard to think of Horus that way, you understand? I do, but it is the way of things, brother, pointed out Fulgrim. Horus is War Master, and we are his generals. War Master Horus commands, and we obey. You're right, of course. He's earned it. I'll give him that, said Ferris, raising his chalice. No one has a greater tally of victories than the Lunar Wolves. Horus deserves our loyalty. Spoken like a true follower, smiled Fulgrim an inner voice goading him into baiting his brother Primarch. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, nothing, said Fulgrim, with a shake of his hand. Come on, didn't you hope it would be you? Didn't you wish, with all your heart, that the Emperor would name you his regent? Ferris shook his head emphatically. No. No? I can honestly say that I didn't, said Ferris, draining his chalice and pouring another. Can you imagine the weight of the responsibility? We've come this far with the Emperor at our head, but I can't even begin to conceive of the ambition that it must have taken to lead a crusade in conquest of the galaxy. So you don't think Horus is up to it? asked Fulgrim. Huh, not at all chuckled Ferris. And don't put words in my mouth, brother. I won't be branded a traitor for failing to support Horus. If any of us can be War Master, I'd expect it to be Horus. Not everyone thinks so. You've been talking to Perturabo and Angron, haven't you? Amongst others, admitted Fulgrim. They communicated their... Disquiet at the Emperor's decision. No matter who was chosen, they would have raged against it, said Ferris. Probably, agreed Fulgrim. But I am glad it was Horus. He will achieve great things. I'll drink to that, said Ferris, draining his chalice. He is a sycophant and easily swayed.
said a voice in his head, and Fulgrim blinked at the force of it.